Hello, I'm Oscar Crawford. Welcome to this edition of the Teaching Ministry of New Eden. We're continuing our journey into the 12-step program of AA, and today we focus on step number three. We made a decision to turn our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you in Jesus' name for the privilege to share with friends and loved ones one more time. I thank you for the privilege to have a good mind to want to serve and to care and to love others. Thank you for the privilege to do so. Use me in this moment to speak to someone's heart who's desperately crying out for help to turn their lives around. I know that you can help others do it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen made a decision <clears throat> to turn our lives and our will over to the care and direction of God as we understood God. How many times have you ever been so desperate for help you believed you would do anything to change your situation? You may have even begun to make deals with God. God, if you get me out of this mess, I will never do this behavior again. Now, it was often a lie, but the desperation pushed you into reaching out to power greater than yourself to fix your situation. Many of us have found ourselves in those kinds of situations over our lifetimes. And we have had to ask ourselves the question, how is it with my best intention that I was not able to change my behavior even after making a deal with God? God fixed my situation, but then I went right back into my behavior. The Bible teaches that there's this strange behavior of the dog that is often too common to the human. It is believed that a dog will vomit, a dog will puke, a dog will throw up and return and eat it again. It's kind of like human behavior when we do something that is killing us that we stop doing but the, the attachment we have for what we were doing draws us back and we do it again. It makes no sense. Human mind is a powerful, powerful thing. It can prompt behavior. When you're not in control of your mind, when you're not in control of your body, both will cause you to do things that you will have deep regret and maybe lingering problems for doing the thing over and over and over again. Some people who smoke too long develop lung cancer. Cigarettes come with a hazard warning. You know, when you travel through cities around the freeways that go around cities, there are, there are paths that you have to take if you're carrying hazardous materials. Oh my goodness. There are paths, there are circles around cities. So you don't have to go through a city with a hazardous material. You have to go out and around the city so that the city wouldn't be affected by it. Cigarettes come with a hazard warning. Same kind of hazard warning uh, we call them hazmat. Same kind of warning you see on, on the roads where they're talking about if you have hazardous materials, hazmat, you have to come and go this way. Cigarette smoking was determined in the 1960s to be hazardous to health, and we know that is true. That if, that if we could get people just to quit smoking, uh, a whole lot of disease, cancers in particular, uh, would go away. Now, we say that on one hand, and know that we have polluted the air to the extent that uh, if you live in China, uh, you, especially in Beijing, if you live in Beijing, just breathing the air is the equivalent of smoking packs of cigarettes a day. It is inconceivable what people have done to the quality of air there. And we deal with it in the United States, just not to that extent. So uh, if, you dr if you smoke long enough, you could come up with lung cancer or some other cancer disease. Uh, if you drink long enough, you can have cirrhosis of the liver or damage other organs in your body. If you use drugs, you can damage your heart. Uh, if we have these self-destructive behaviors that we do over and over again, fast driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, I mean, it can lead to bad, bad results. And so there are times when uh, those of us who have had experiences like this, we've gone through step one where we realized that we were powerless and our behavior was unmanageable. Are listening to me, and and then we 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 came to the knowledge that it was going to take something greater than us to fix us or to restore us to sanity. And we get to step three, we're we're really at the point where it's time for us to make a decision. 
decisions. Sometimes decisions are tough for people. You know, you know people who just can't ever seem to decide or to make up their mind on what they're going to do, which way they're going to go? I was walking with my granddaughter a couple of days. We went out for a two-mile walk. And uh, when we got to the corner, I said, hey, which way you want to go? I don't know. Choose. I, I sort of pushed her into making a choice. And out of a, 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 a subtle response of anger and frustration, she says, well, just go left. I said, good, baby. You made a choice. You made a decision. Choosing is tough for people sometimes. But we make choices all the time. And whether or not we are aware of it, we are totally engaged in our behavior, whether that behavior is on autopilot or not. Last week, we took a look at three people. Remember, uh, we looked at Mark chapter 5, where we talked about the gathering demoniac who had the legion of demons inside him and the lady who had the issue of blood for 12 years. Well, the concluding person we talked about last week, uh, and, I, and I call him the disrespectful son, uh, brothers, gentlemen, you, you, you may know something about this. You may have been this person. There's something about fathers and sons, sons with families, that sons grow up with this testosterone-driven brain uh, that says, you know, we don't want to do what anybody says. We just want to go and do our stuff. Well, this brother did the same thing. You know, he had gone to his father and said, look, I want what's coming to me, and I want to go. i got things I want to do. I want to get in that fast lane. I want to do wine, women, and song. I want to make friends. I want to live my life the way I choose. And when privileged to do so, this boy found himself in such a situation. Remember I told you that Jews don't particularly like pigs, swine? Well, this boy got so desperate and so down that he was working with swine, but it didn't stop there. The, the downhill run didn't stop there. It got so bad that he couldn't feed himself that he slipped when he thought nobody was looking, and he got down in the muck with the pigs and ate the same thing they were eating. Now, you know you don't want to live like that. And yet, more often than not, people are living lives equivalent to that. Imagine being, being a, a six-figure earner with your job or with your sales product or something you created your business uh, and your behavior has caused you to lose it all, but you keep trying to keep it covered up so nobody knows. You know that's what addicts do. We do our thing and then we try to cover it up because we don't want anybody to know. We want them to still think life is like it is, but we know that we're losing. And so people get desperate and you see people slipping into other avenues of life to try and meet their daily needs. And it gets to be a problem. We know that there have even been people who have stolen from their family. Wives have come home and husbands have sold all the furniture. I hope you've never been through that. I know too many women who've been through that. Or it flips. Wives have done incredible things like not pay the mortgage and the bank or the mortgage lender call the husband at his job and say, dude, when are you going to make your house payment? He said, man, I've been making my house payment regularly. Only to find out that there is a behavior the wife is engaged in that's been losing all the money. Do you know people who have gambling addictions? Who as soon as they get paid, they take their paycheck to... Uh, gambling venues, casinos as it were, and they can't help but stay there until it's gone. And then immediately when the last penny is lost, it dawns on them, oh my goodness, I can't pay my rent, I can't eat, I can't clothe myself. What if somebody finds out? And so people who are addicts, they live with a great deal of guilt and shame. Well, there is good news today. There is good news, and the good news is resonant in the experience of the boy who even got so desperate he was eating what hogs were eating. Listen, what he said in Luke chapter 15, as he was in this mess, in this terrible mess, he thought about where he had come from. Remember in step one I talked to you about Apple Jack Lewis? Apple Jack Lewis died remembering where he came from and saying, I just want to go home. Well, this boy was still within himself enough to remember that his father had hired workers that were better off than him. His father's workers had more than enough. They had housing, they had clothes, they had money, they had food. They had every necessity for life. And there he was, standing with pigs and slipping to eat what he was feeding them. I don't know what your situation is today, but you can do just like this brother did. He says, look, okay, I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm going to swallow my sense of ego. I'm going home. I am no longer worthy. I am no longer worthy to be my father's son. I'm going to go back and ask just to be one of his workers. I'm going back 
just to ask to be one of his workers. Now, look, here's, here's even further good news in this person's context. You remember with the gathering demoniac, when he went home, people were scared. When he got okay, people were scared of him because they were only used to him being crazy. I imagine that when this boy had left, his mom sat by the window many days hoping her son would come back. And sometimes she would just imagine she could see him coming down the road back home. And I imagine she even said that to her husband more than once. He's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. And the husband probably said, honey, our son is gone. He made a choice. He's going to have to live his life. But one morning the sister said, baby, he is coming back. And the father looked out and there came his son. And he was so filled with thankful happiness that his son had returned. He sent his workers to prepare a feast to celebrate his return. I want to do that with you. If you are going through the hell of self-destructive behavior and you want to turn your life around, you've got to let somebody know that you really are serious about wanting help and to get your life back on track. You want your mind back on track and your body back on track. I want to celebrate your coming home with you. You've got to go back. You can't keep going that path that you're on. That path only leads to death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The full payday, all you're ever going to get from that kind of behavior is to die. Now, we're all going to die, but we don't want to die that way. When he said that he was going to go back, it was beginning to live out step number three. He made a decision that he was going to turn his will and his life over to someone else greater than him. And in this, in this context, he's returning to be governed by, directed by, his father. Made a decision to turn our lives and our will over to the care of God as we understand God. Listen, I know everybody doesn't believe in God, but look around you. You didn't create anything. You did not create anything, and your mind may suggest to you a number of things. And look, I'm okay with you believing whatever you want to believe, but if what you're believing is not doing it for you, you might ought to use this wonderful gift of your mind to make another choice. Brother, last week when he first found himself in this situation, he knew it was time to cry out for help. The Gadarene demoniac cried out for help. The woman who was bleeding cried out for help. And this brother's cried out for help so much, he's going home. Isn't it time for you to go home? Isn't it time for you to go home? There are likely people who love you, who are praying for you, who are caring about you, who just hope every day that you will come to yourself and turn your life around and go back home. All right. Even Jesus... Even Jesus, when facing death, prayed, prayed so hard, blood came out of his eyes. Prayed so hard, desperate to avoid dying. Turned his life and his will over to God when he said, I really don't want to take this route. I know the plan. I know that it is to provide a path for people to live empowered and liberated. But if there is another way, can we discuss that, God? Can we negotiate that? But whatever, your will be done and not mine. Our will can sometimes take us down some very self-destructive paths. And today I'm encouraging you. I'm literally pleading with you. Don't die. Get up. Turn around and go home. There are people who will welcome you. Everybody's not. There are people who will welcome you. Everybody won't. But there are people who will welcome you with open and loving arms and welcome you back home and enter into relationship with you one more time or just continue relationship with you and help you get better. I encourage you today. If you are as disgusted with your experience as I believe you likely are, that you will consider a full-scale surrender. In war, when an enemy is defeated, the enemy will wave the white flag, will surrender, which means I totally surrender my will to that which has conquered me. You've already surrendered once. You've surrendered to the behavior and you don't like where it's taken you. Surrender now to your behavior and your way of thinking and consider turning your life and your will over to the direction of God as you understand God. And if you don't understand God, get with some people who do. 
Thank you for joining me today. I pray in Jesus' name that you will have opportunity to wake up, to turn your life around, and go home, and let's get your life going again. I'm Oscar Crawford, and this is the teaching ministry of New Eden. Thanks again for having joined me.